Hi, I'm Don. Welcome to Patreon. I just created a couple of tiers at Patreon, which is the Iron tier and the Adamantium tier, which is now the highest. The highest tier is loaded, super loaded, and I'm doing free commissions for my Adamantium patrons, and this is the first. I'm only offering like a couple of slots or maybe even four if the models are small for my patrons. This commission is for Rico the Anvil at Instagram. Today's video is about value sketching or basically slop chop, the slop in the chop. <laughs> This underpainting can be simply called black and white underpainting or zenithal or I prefer to call it just sketching. Hi, I'm Don. Welcome to my studio. This channel is supported by all these awesome brands. I now have an affiliate link with PK Pro, and if you're a top tier patron, you get a 5% discount. PK Pro is the biggest hobby like web store in Europe. The website is loaded with paints and hobby tools, and they even get like pre orders of Vallejo Express colors. Before we paint, let's do some basing. This old bottle of Tamiya cement is actually polyurethane reducer which you can get at hardware stores. It is stronger and it melts the plastic a lot more. That's why I use it to melt the mold lines. It is also the strongest product that I have used to bond everything together. However, if you need a faster bond, you should get the quick setting, the new Tamiya Extra Thin Cement Quick Setting. It practically bonds pieces together in a second. I really enjoy looking at really like complicated bases, but mine is a bit less complicated because I want my bases to be super strong in which you could practically clean it with a toothbrush and you won't really damage anything you don't have fiddly little like twigs and stuff like that so i want the construction of my bases to be super strong the pumice texture paints are like the hardest and strongest most durable among all the vallejo texture paints however it dries a bit slower so you really have to leave it like at least overnight to let it dry also, a quick note, I always use wood glue because it's more resistant to water or I think it's water resistant and it's way more durable than ordinary PVA glue. After applying all the texture paints and I'm happy with the basic construction of the base, I left this to cure overnight so that's roughly around 6 to 8 to 10 hours before I primed it with Mecha Black Primer. Mecha Primers are way more durable than surface primers and I highly recommend them. We are spray can airbrushing the primer. It's a 30 PSI 0.4 needle and it's a pretty strong pressure which is great for priming. However, primers are really thick so we still use our thinning sauce. I don't like recording on film the priming of black primer because it messes up my table. The black primer was airbrush, focusing on the crevices first and this was applied in three thin coats and I made sure that all the crevices are black. Now we paint dark gray green. This is the most important color for me at least when doing zenithal sketching because it kinda like brings out the details a bit more and the color is just perfect over black primer. Dark gray green is a warm dark gray color. You could also use the phantom gray, mecha phantom gray that is a cool bluish dark gray color. 
both the dark gray green and the phantom gray are the best like colors for painting over black primer and they kind of like help create the or help the succeeding gray tones the lighter gray tones so that you produce a smoother finish so these are the most important colors when doing sketching of course, if you're painting a lot of models like an army of zombies, you could paint just black primer and then paint white paint on top of that from like from the top to create a zenithal underpainting or a sketching, value sketching. However, I like this to have smoother transition, so I'm building up the colors with gray paints. This value sketching doesn't have to be super smooth, but by painting different gray tones on top of each other, we're practically creating a smoother transition. Apparently, I ran out of gray green, which is the perfect color on top of dark gray green. So today, we're going to use a different color. We are using Gray Z. If you want, you could mix a bit of dark gray green with Gray Z so that you have like a contrast that is not too far from dark gray green. And thus, you will produce a smoother, super smooth finish. Now we need a bit more control and we're using the Infinity Airbrush so that we kind of control the painting a bit more and we lower the PSI to 20 to 25 and we're using a 0.2 needle. So much like layering, we're painting a smaller area with this color and of course with a finer brush or a detailing brush. Mecha colors or Vallejo in general thins really well with my thinning sauce but if the air compressor pressure you kept it at 30 psi you could just use a flow improver or a drop of flow improver to help prevent deep drying if you decide and because you enjoy painting with the airbrush at 30 psi you just have to limit the paint flow by using the quick access behind the infinity airbrush and also you need good trigger control notice that i painted this light gray z color mostly from the top and less from the sides now, if you decide to lower the air pressure to around 20 to 25 PSI, you have to keep the airbrush near the model or else you'll produce like some not, not, not very nice looking speckles. So keeping the pressure high will give you a smoother finish. However, you have to really be good with trigger control. You could actually stop airbrushing at this point and you could just dry brush like gloss white on top of the models and you'll have a very nice sketching. You don't really need to change airbrushes but I like using all my airbrushes once in a while because well what's the point of having them? <laughs> Similar to the gray Z color, you have to keep the airbrush close to the model so you have a bit more control and never over thin light colored paints because you will like spider web all over the model. If you are having problems with my thinning sauce or the thinning of lighter colored paints, you could like just jack up the air pressure and just use the flow improver. So today I decided to paint white paint and the best easiest paint white paint of Vallejo is the premium white. The premium range of paints are actually the most airbrush ready Vallejo paints in the market. You could actually just use them, put them in the airbrush and paint away. Make sure that the compressor or the air pressure is really nice at least 25 psi and put a little bit of flow improver to help prevent tip drying. Now let's summarize this video. First, why sketch? Is this beneficial even if you don't plan to use contrast paints or express colors or transparent paints in inks? Well, it is because some of the paints, mostly yellows and some greens and reds, are very translucent. So, 
even if you don't see them when you brush paint or airbrush you will benefit i mean your painting will benefit from this type of underpainting you create very nice volume really quick during the painting process now you could actually improve this further by applying like an oil wash a black oil wash and paint the recesses and also you could paint highlights with more white paint white gloss paint and you'll have more volume and definition also the oil washes and glazes will smoothen out the rough like areas of your painting and will give you a really nice value sketching i might still do that and like tighten the contrast and darken some areas of this model so that we have a better underpainting but we'll do that in a separate video that's it pancit that's it. We're done. I hope you liked the video. Do like, comment, subscribe, and consider joining the channel so that you'll be part of our Discord community. Saludos!